my students today we are discussing the pediatric history pediatric history is a bit different from the adult history few steps are additional so let us discuss the number one is the approach from the right side then greeting the patient in case of pediatrics uh, you have to greet the mother the or father the parents actually then the introduction you would introduce yourself to the parents the uh, number four is the taking the consent that you would tell them that we are asking these questions that will help us in making better diagnosis and treatment then you would start taking history history has its own steps and then when you are done with the history you would say thanks to the patient to the mother or father or whoever is present with the child now the history number one is the bio data you would ask about the name age gender weight height of the child um, the father name or whatever that comes in the bio data these uh, are asked usually and then number two is the chief complaints you would ask about the uh, you would ask the parents that what were the complaints that compelled them to come to the hospital for example if the parents tell you that the child is having loose motion for the last two hours and fever for the last one hour along with the nausea and vomiting for the last one hour then these are the chief complaints of the patient uh, of the child always write the uh, complaints in chronological order chronological means that those complaints those issues that develop first you have to mention them first and those that develop later you have to mention them later in your history then you have to uh, history uh, present the history the complaints you have to elaborate the co uh, complaints chief complaints so the history of presenting illness is actually the elaboration of the main complaints like the parents told you that he is uh, the child is having loose motion for the last two hours so you would now explain the loose motion you would ask these questions that the number of episodes the consistency the color the smell the blood or mucus in it uh, all these questions should be asked and you have to write them in the history then uh, as the parents told you that the child is having fever for the last one hour now you will explain that as well you would ask that was the fever high grade or low grade was it continuous or intermittent uh, was it associated with uh, with the time like more at day and or more at night etc and uh, any other association with the fever then the nausea and vomiting you would ask about the episodes of vomiting the time the quantity uh, how much was the uh, vomitus and the color the contents the smell the type was it a projectile one or not so all these question was it a bilious or not all these questions come um, should come in your mind to ask the patient that would be the elaboration of his uh, chief complaints that comes in the history of presenting illness right if there is any other complaint then you would ask that complaint uh, elaborate that complaint as well like if the child complains of headache then you would elaborate the headache as well like you would ask the patient is it associated with something while you calm the here uh, is there any association with the headache um, or headache has any association with the calming or any other associated factor or it is more at night or more in at the time or you know while you're studying it is more or you're using a mobile or computer um, the headache is more at that time so all these questions should come in your mind so that to make a better diagnosis okay now so the most important steps that are very much important in pediatric history that it makes it different from the adult history that is the birth history you have to ask the antenatal the natal and the postnatal history in the birth history like number one is the uh, antenatal history you would ask the mother if she was gdm at the time of pregnancy or pih that is the gestational diabetes mellitus and pregnancy induced hypertension was she having any kind of infection or torch 
then you would ask the blood group of parents you would ask them the that they uh, that the mother had done the vaccination at that time or not and uh, did she uh, has she taken the uh, supplements at that time or not so all these questions or whatever comes in your mind that are that is important in antenatal history you would ask the mother you would also ask that i forgot to mention here about the anomaly scans done if she has ever done if she had undergone any any radiological um, investigation like x-ray um, you would ask her what was there in the ultrasound uh, what did the doctor say at that time and also the uh, other questions like uh, did she uh, fell, feel the uh, quickening at normal time uh, was she having all the issues uh, resolved at that time if she was having any kind of so that all, everything comes in the antenatal history it's a type of gynecological history then comes the natal history then you would ask the mother that the was there any complication at the time of birth was it a, a normal vaginal delivery or it was a lower uh, segment cesarean section then you, you would ask that uh, is there any history of PPH, uh, postpartum hemorrhage, or any other infectious history um, at the time of uh, birth, baby's birth. So everything that comes in, in your mind at that time, you would ask her about the natal history. Then the postnatal history, you would ask the mother that the child cried immediately after birth or not was the child resuscitated at that time or not and the EPCAR score at one minute and five minutes then the weight at birth was the child uh, admitted to nursery at that time or uh, was the child having jaundice or any other problem at that time of true birth if the mother is illiterate you can ask the father if the father is illiterate or he doesn't know about anything you can ask the parents to bring the documents that were with them during their pregnancy during the childbirth or the hospital admission and after uh, checking out the those uh, uh, documents you can come to know what was the problem at that time so these are very much important in birth history because these steps would make some of the diagnosis easier for you number two is the feeding history feeding history is also very much important like you would ask the mother that the child was breastfed or it uh, or he was given a formula milk and at what age the weaning was started and uh, with what so these uh, questions make your diagnosis easier because some of the diseases are associated with the um, milk problem or the weaning problem, the child may be may be underweight because of the weaning or any other issue. So malnutrition in malnutrition, you you should ask the feeding history. So it's very much important. Then comes the vaccination history. You would ask, it, was it done according to EPI or not? Was any dose missed at that time or not? So the all of these uh, uh, questions that um, helps you in your diagnosis and making a better diagnosis because most of the diseases are associated with these uh, things like uh, unvaccinated child may have many problems as compared to the vaccinated child if the specific vaccinations for specific diseases are not done and that at that time and the feeding history and then the birth history some child are syndromic since birth or they are diagnosed with the syndrome with, uh, during the normally scan or anything so uh, you would come to know that the child is having this problem since that time you would uh, treat him accordingly that would save your time and will help you in diagnosis another important step is the developmental history you would ask that the child has uh, uh, developed the uh, milestones the developed milestones at appropriate age or not like the usually the child um, neck holding at the time specific time and the sitting with the support the crawling at eight and nine months at and the walking etc walking with the support so they all occur at the specific ages so we'd ask uh, what did the child develop all these milestones at his appropriate age or was it a delayed one 
then the uh, uh, question the step is the past history if it asks any surgical or medical significant history if there is any if the child has undergone any kind of surgical uh, surgery or any kind of medical history he is having significantly or he is using any kind of drugs or is given like usually the hypothyroid ch child um, uh, is on the um, thyroxines you would ask the drug history is important i've just given an example of the high congenital hypothyroidism there are many other then the family history would ask that the parents uh, marriage was a consanguineous marriage or not and the uh, what is the child product of this marriage or not and then you would ask about the siblings um, all the uh, um, you would uh, ask all these questions about the family history, the initial socioeconomic history like TB and other diseases, these are associated with socioeconomic status, so that is important to ask. Then the systematic review, like you will uh, ask about each system separately in your history, or you may examine the patient at that time and then you can write down the CVS about the cerebrovascular system, about the respiratory system, the CNS and GIT system when you are done with the systemic review as well then you will say thanks to the patient uh, usually to the parents and uh, then um, you would uh, make your own differential diagnosis like in the above case uh, um, that can be acute gastroenteritis or any other problem so you would make your differential diagnosis then to be discussed with your senior So this was all about the pediatric history, a bit different from the adult history. If you learn the adult history, you can learn the pediatric history as well. Only a few steps are additional. And uh, if you like my videos, please subscribe the channel for more videos. And thanks for watching.